Hello, my name's Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamps here in the UK. Welcome to YouTube Tuesday. So you can see that we've moved out of the basement and now I'm in the attic. And today I thought it'd be great if we, since we've got the new location, I thought we'd start something new with canvases. Now we've got some fantastic canvas boards in and I just want to show you the different sizes before we begin. And you'll see straight away when you look at this, this is me trying to practice my signature, it's not going very well. But you see we've got four inch, six inch, eight inch and 12 inch. Now there's a reason why we've got all these squares coming in slowly. Uh, inch by inch and, uh, and our, more will be revealed on that one. And then we've also got our A6, A5, A4 and A3. These are great um, and I, again I'll show you why I wanted them to frame each other almost. So what I want to do today is use the A5 one, the small one, and the A4 which is the next size up. And uh, I thought it might be a good idea if we use some grunge paste and one of my favourite stencils of all time, um, the houses. And you'll see that what I've done is I've taken the liberty of cutting off the top part because I can and because it, it's, it's going to work really well for what I want to do. So the first thing we want to do, let me just show you, it's just like working on card except we're working on canvas board. And what we'll do is we'll take a piece of low tack tape and we'll just, I'm going to drag in from the, the, um, the base. So I'll turn it around like so. And you'll see that the, the tape just holds this in place for a moment. I can move this around as I, as I choose, you see. So once I decide where it is, where it is that I want the houses to be, then I'm going to just take some grunge paste, here we go, and the grunge paste will almost act as a, it will secure the, the stencil. So we're just going to load some down like so in the corner and then I want to spread it through. Now I'm not worried about whether or not this is perfectly smooth. I deliberately want to go out beyond the houses. Do you see how I'm just smearing it really grungy like so? Again, I'll go in and if it's a bit dried out because sometimes I'm getting to the bottom of my pot, you see, and it starts to get quite thick, um, I like that. And see, I'm just spreading it out like so and that'll do, perfect. So I'll put that in there like that and then I will lift this up and I've got my first um, area sorted. Now what I'm going to do is speed up this process. I, I've got a bowl of water here and I'm going to just wash this stencil because I want to, let's turn this around and take a good look at what I'm doing. I want to put some more houses over here, but I want to flip the stencil. This is one of the great things about stencils. They're double-sided really, aren't they? Whereas with a stamp, you have to go through all sorts of contortions to get a reflection. With a stencil, it's a piece of cake because you just flick it round. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to wash this in water and then I'm going to cheat because I've already done all this. So I'll let that dry because I'm going to need it again in a minute. I'm going to put this to one side and I'm going to take one that I've already done in both sides, you see, and it's also completely dry. Um, took about 20 minutes to dry on the canvas because it's quite thick and gritty. Uh, you can always speed it up a little bit with, uh, with a heat gun. Just go easy, go gently. Right, so now our canvas is ready to, to start with and I'm going to use paint. That's how I'm going to apply colour. And I want to introduce you to some fantastic paint. This is um, the golden open acrylics, very, very beautiful. I'm going to use the quinacridone nickel azo gold, uh, quinac oh, I wish I could say it, quinacridone magenta, and probably some phthalo blue as well. So let's have a look what we're, where we start. I'm going to put a base down with the yellow, and you'll see that underneath my artwork, I'm using just a craft mat. And that's what I'm going to do. Now, here's the good news. You know those brilliant clarity brushes that I'm always using? I want to use the same brushes 
for the paint as well. They wash up beautifully, again, in that warm soapy water that I've got here. So the first thing we want to do is, let me show you, I'm gonna put down about that much on the mat. The, the difference between um, the De La Rowney open acrylics and the golden acrylics is that these are open, so that means that they're slow drying. And I'm just going to show you how beautifully they blend. So I'll work the, the paint into the brush like so. I'm gonna stand up for this one. And I also want a little tiny bit of copy paper just on the side so I can monitor what I'm doing. Because I don't, it's not really dry brushing, but it's certainly gradually applying the color. And you'll see what I'm gonna do now is just flick, watch my fingers on the brush, and I'm just smoothing over the yellow like this. And I'm coming in from the same side, I'll go and pick up a bit more, and I'll just keep coming in from the same side again and again and again. Go and pick up a bit more, and in I come. See? And then maybe a little bit from this side as well, like so. But you see how the more you do this, look, we just mop up everything off that mat, and as I keep coming in, you'll see it's much darker as I do this. Right, so spread across, and I'm just gonna add a little bit more and get a good base down. So let's go in again. Because they're slow drying, when I add a different color, the colors begin to blend beautifully. I mean, if I want to, I can let the layers dry, but I want to actually mix the colors as I, as I paint. So again, I'm gonna add a little bit darker. See, now it's really starting to come in. So I don't want to add too much in the same place. So I'll run some through there like that. I'm gonna hold my hand like that while I bring a little bit in from this side too, just a tiny bit, maybe up there, so there we go. And the harder you press, the darker it will get, it's quite straightforward. Okay, so we've got a good base there. And I'm gonna reserve that brush for this project for the gold. Now let's take some quinacridone magenta. This is a really bright fuchsia. And I'm just going to add a little bit there, next to the yellow. And now I shall take one of my brushes again. Now, when you add this bright fuchsia color to the yellow, you get all sorts of fantastic oranges. Watch. So we'll load our brush up like this, gently does it. And we're already starting to blend the colors here. Now let's get some red going here. Gently does it though, because this is a bright color. So when we go now, and I can change the yellow See, and I'm just sweeping across. Let's just sweep across. Right, so when I've done that side, I'm gonna come over this side. Let me just check out what I'm doing over here. And I'm holding my, my hand here to stop it moving. And I just want to add a little tiny bit of, let's do some proper pink in that area there. You see? Good. Now, over this side, I wanna get some more red going. So I'm gonna take my, my pink and I'm gonna actually mix it with the yellow. And you'll see that this makes this redder. Okay. And what I'm doing is I'm using the side of the brush to do the job. All right, cool. Now let's have a look. I can go in, you see, with the brush and I can actually add an accent where I want it. So I can get quite exact as well with my shadow. Let's get some red in there, change the color of that house. Okay, it's coming together. Good. So that's our pink adjusted. We're just getting down the base colors really before we begin. Now, one of the most important things when you're using these acrylics is to be able to, what I love about them is you can lift them off again. So let's take a paper towel and let's take a baby wipe. And for example, now I just want to add or take away uh, a little bit of this color on this grunge paste. So I'm just wiping the house clean on that side. There we go. And I think I'll do the same on this side as well, just to add a little bit of contrast. So I'm taking away, just wiping literally the color off the 
grunge paste. And then I'm going to take a, a paper towel and I'm going to just dry off what I've just made wet. See? So if I run my paper towel over this, some of the paint is still wet. Okay, but you can see how you can get some superb contrast there. We'll come back and we'll do lots more of that. I want to show you one more thing. Let's say we've got yellow, we've got the magenta. Now let's take a blue. I'll go in with a blue, fallow blue, this will be good. Now the thing about blue is when you add it to yellow, of course you're gonna get green. So let's check this out. Here we are. So I'm just gonna add some blue and, and why don't you just sit back and enjoy the music. Okay, let's take a look. So we've added some blue now too, and you'll see that wherever the blue hit the yellow, it, you've got these wonderful blends of uh, yellow, and where the blue hit the pink, you've got wonderful blends of purple. This is what I mean about these open acrylics, they blend very, very nicely. Right, so I've got my three brushes on call, if I should need them again. And this is what I love. Even though you may look at this and think it's really difficult, it's so easy because I can go in and I can loosen up the paint and I can remove it as and when I want. So you see here, I've got these fantastic colors. Uh, where are my glasses? And I'll see if I can just add a little bit in the sky. I want to take away a little bit there. So I'll just wet, you see? And then I can rub it and make a a light source, there you go. It's not necessarily a moon, but it's for sure, it's a light source. Then I can come down and I can just wipe through. If it's not moving, like say for example, I want to move some in this roof. If I just add a little bit of water with the baby wipe, then when I go back in, you see how it comes off immediately. It's great. So if you're not happy with something or you feel you've overcooked it or you want to add something, you just go in, take it away, and then reapply it, it's very, very simple. So for example, maybe I want to highlight this, this roof, you see, go in, just lift it, lift it off, easy. Think you took too much away? Probably did, Barbara. Take your, pen, take your paintbrush, and I'm gonna go in with some pink, and then just add a bit of shadow again. There you go. So it's options, 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 you see? So as we're going round, you can just move and add, take away, et cetera, et cetera. And the nice thing about working on canvas, this is what I love, is that you've got that lovely um, sort of texture that you get from canvas. Let's go back in to the sky now with the yellow, because that will tone down what we were doing. And I'm just gonna hold it in place here, down the bottom with the tissue, so I don't get completely covered. And now I'll come back in with the yellow and this will tone down. I think one of the things you've got to do is figure out when to know when to stop. Otherwise, this will just go to mud, it will go muddy. But let's have a look here. If I add a bit of yellow to this red, see how the house is going a fantastic dark slaty greeny color. See, and then I can wipe it away. And again, this may be a bit too much of an emerald green for me, say. So I'll go in with a little bit of red and then that will tone it down beautifully. There we are. So I've toned it down in that area. Then I'll take my paper towel and I'll just wipe it through. So I'm getting the shadow. And anywhere where there are imperfections in the uh, grunge paste, this picks it up beautifully. So once you've, you're happy with that, I could spend another half hour at least lifting off and putting back and so on. Um, maybe I want to just highlight a little tiny bit here and there. Let's just get the highlights up because I think you'll, you'll see what I mean. I'm going to show you another way to get some highlights going as well, which is pretty cool. Let's have a look. That will do for now. Okay. Let me show you something. If I take a craft knife and I 
just take the top, the top piece, and then I just run very gently. I run the craft knife. I mean, ideally I'd wait for this to dry, but we don't, we don't need to. Let's just be careful. And then I'm just going to take the edge off like this, where the light is hitting the, the houses, you see? So I'll go through like so, and I'll just, I can add highlights. See here, for example, it's very dark. So I can go in and I can bring this window out just by adding a little bit of a, just scratching along like this. If it's too dark, see, go in with your, there we go, just gently. Bring it through like that. And then if I've got a brush, just need a clean brush. There we go. And I can just go through and get rid of the bits. You see? That's it. And I can work my way through the whole picture, just taking out the edges like this. Just go through like that. So, you go and put the kettle on and I'll have five minutes just sorting out these houses. Of course, if it was only this easy, eh? Okay, so let's take a look and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. You see how I've, I've just come in and highlighted these areas here. And then what I can do then is just to tone it down and make it not quite so white, is just run back over the whole picture with my, with my yellow, with my gold paintbrush. And this will just tone the colors down. And still, if I feel that something looks a little bit too dark, I can just wipe through like so. Here we go, I think this is a little bit dark. So we'll wipe through this area like that. Here we go, look. And then I can brighten that up immediately so it doesn't look quite so dull and dreary. So here we are. Let's just take some more off that side of that house. That lightens that up. Let's get some more texture and color going in that area there. Doesn't that look sharp? Right, very, very arty indeed. And basically it's that simple. And then we'll just let that dry, wipe through, and, and the first part's completely done. And what I want to show you now is while I'm cleaning my hands, is how to frame this because of course working with board is a lot easier than for example working with um, on a canvas because it's flat isn't it so for me starting out now as I am on canvases I'm much happier working with board but then I thought hmm so if I wanted to put this on my wall how am I going to do that and then it occurred to me that I could actually use the larger boards because they're inexpensive really so I could use the larger board and then put this one on there and I'll make a smashing, that will make a smashing um, frame for it. So for example, let me show you, if I take a piece of copy paper, just because I know that my artwork isn't entirely dry yet, so I'm just going to pop this down like so, obviously ideally I'd wait till it's dry but um, I can show you anyway. And then I'm going to take, because then I thought well how do I stick this on there? So if I take a piece of double-sided adhesive sheet like this and I pop that in there, like so, on the back. As I say, I recommend that you wait until this is completely dry before you play this trick. There we go. Um, then that can sit on there. But let's just do one more thing that I've forgotten and that's the edges. See, because it looks a bit tatty at the moment. So we're going to take our brush and we're just going to just go along the edge like so with our different colors. So I'm going along with blue here. There we are. And we're just going to go all the way around. We can mix it if we like. Take a bit of red. And round we go. Round and round. Let's just speed this up a little bit for you. So 
just dry that the excess off and then I'll finish the job. Right, I'm happy with that. So now we'll pop that back down there. It does dry, it's not, you know, it doesn't take hours, it dries quite quickly. But now, for example, if I peel away this here, then I can take my, my lovely pristine canvas, my A4, then I can turn this over and I can position it right in the center where I want it to sit like so, and my artwork is complete. And then I'll take a piece of copy paper and just press that down. And there we are. And the only thing left to do is sign my masterpiece. I love it, I hope you do too. So let's have a look at this now. Let's take a look at this. So we've mounted this on a blank, white, beautiful piece. It's, regardless of what's happened on the back, the back now is pristine. So it's, it's a gallery proof. It looks fantastic. You can date it and sign it. Or you can sign it on the bottom here. Now, if you wanted to hang it on a wall, it's obvious you just get a little ring, use the double-sided tape, attach the ring, perfect. Or, and this is something that I came up with, which was, I think is a really great idea, we've got these little stands. Because not all artwork has to hang on a wall, does it? So I've got these stands that I want to show you, you see? And they come flat packed, and they, they just slide in like this, look. So you go like that, and then you just slide it in. And you can make that as thick as you like, depending on what you're, on the angle. And then you see, you just stand your artwork like so. And if you want that to come in a bit more because you think the slant's too great, then you just tighten up your frame like that. And there's a fantastic stand for your artwork. I think that's great. So there we go, we've used an A5 board, mounted it on an A4 mount board. We've used golden open acrylics on top of um, grunge paste, which has given you those marvelous mixes um, of color. So we've only used three colors, but obviously there are loads there. And we've had the, most, the two most powerful tools in the trade, a baby wipe and a paper towel. So I hope that you enjoyed uh, working with me on that one. And, uh, and it's a lot easier than you think it is. Thanks very much for joining me and I shall see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye now.